Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to photograph couples. Hi, my name is Jerry Gionis. I'm a wedding portrait and fashion photographer. I've been photographing for 27 years and teaching for 20. I'm going to share some of that experience with you right now and share with you how to photograph couples and how to go from this to this. By the way, I have this amazing course, the Portrait Quick Start. Make sure you click on the link below or right up here and download it and enjoy it for free. Okay, so you're going to photograph a couple. Where do you begin? Where do you start? What do you do? Now, if you're inexperienced, you've just started, perhaps maybe you haven't been taught uh, in a way that's maybe a little bit easier, a little bit more efficient, you may simply just want to go to the best location and the lighting is what it is. Because you might have a handsome couple and you think, great, they're a handsome couple, let's pick that nice tree, let's pick that nice wall, and guess what, the lighting is really bad. We're going to simplify this for you and give you a common denominator in which to work from. For me, I, I will always pick beautiful lighting above a great location. And you might even ask, what does beautiful lighting look like? What does a good location look like? Can we harmonize them together? How do we do it? First, we're going to go outside and show you what a beautiful couple can look like with bad lighting. Okay, so you see a nice little piece of wall there. We've got nice little concrete, we've got some rock, um, but you know, your first instinct might be to simply just photograph them against that wall. So let's see what that looks like. So guys, I don't know, just stand there. See, with couples photography, it's funny because couples are not going to always be that graceful. They're not always going to sink in nicely. They might just get together in a poor way, but you have to add that little bit of finesse if you want to look above and beyond an, an, uh, an everyday iPhone photographer. And that's okay. You can get great shots with an iPhone, but if you want to take that next step and next level, you want to add a little bit of finesse. And that's really got to do with mainly lighting, choosing the location that's complementary, uh, finessing their pose in a certain way and bringing out the best in them as a couple. So now if you guys sort of get together, just to hug each other normally, just like, you know, nothing too finessed. And now let's photograph you guys. And what I love about this shot, uh, turn this way a little bit, good, just there is we have a decent location and we have a really handsome couple, but this is what a, a handsome couple looks like with really bad lighting. And uh, Rainy, I've been photographing for years and I love it when she looks unattractive. And right now she does not look that attractive, but we have a nice location. We have to get that out of our minds, guys. This is just not gonna work. So remember, always look for better lighting than a location. So why doesn't this work? Well, if you look at the photograph, we've got the light hitting on Rainy's hair. It's really not hitting her face except for her nose. So now her nose looks a little bit more pronounced. The lighting is split lighting um, uh, Jacob. And even though that's okay, you can light him from one side and have shade on the other. He's squinting. He sort of can't really handle the lighting a little bit too. The location looks really good, but they don't look good at all. So what we have to do, sorry about that, that was a little bit harsh, um, but we have to remember that lighting, and that, well, here's what's happening. The sun's coming from up above, hitting down low, and the golden rule with lighting is you just want to turn the nose or the chin, whichever way you want to remember it, turn the nose and the chin towards the light. It's always going to be more fruitful. In this case, like I said, if you were just bringing out a couple and you were photographing for the first time, you'll be tempted to shoot for just the location. And I'm saying, this is not what I call a low hanging fruit. This is not an easy way to photograph someone, even though the location might be nice. Uh, here's another way of actually photographing them. So here we see the sun bouncing off the ground and then coming up. Here's what's gonna happen. So you might say, okay, well, I know not to photograph them in full sun. And not that that's an issue. You can photograph in full sun and make it look really good, but we'll cover that in another episode. Let's get you guys actually in the, in the shade there of the garage door. Okay, so just there, come a little bit this way. Good, close the gap. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get you a bit more this way, sorry guys. A bit more that way, a bit more that way, and then turn so that you're about over here like this. Okay. So I'm not worried about the pose for the moment. I just wanna prove my point when it comes to lighting. Okay. Okay, close the gap. Okay, chin's up a little bit, looking at me. Hold it there, hold it. Eyes it. Good. Now, if you look at this, you might be thinking, well, Jerry, that's pretty good. Um, it's okay. It's certainly better than it was before in full sun uh, coming from the side. What's happening here is the sun is hitting the ground and coming up. 
Now, probably not so obvious on Rainy, but I find on Jacob, we're getting um, those unflattering shadows on the upper cheekbones. And also, he's actually squinting quite a bit. Now, if you do want to photograph someone in full sun or in a, in a place where they're looking off into the sun, what you want to do is you want to close the eyes, try to relax the forehead, say to your subjects, hey, just don't anticipate the sun because you'll already be squinting. Just relax. On the count of three, open up your eyes. One, two, three, click, and then they can squint all they, lot, all they want. All you want is a fraction of a second. But still, I'm not completely happy with that kind of lighting. Okay, now you may have heard of backlighting. Let's come this way. So we have a nice location. So logically, we would just put them in front of those trees, the bush, whatever, um, just nice and close. Switch sides there, guys. Good, all right. So we have a nice location. Nice little graduation portrait. High school sweethearts, not really. But let's have a look. Okay, so we're going to photograph them accordingly. Let's have a look. Okay, one, two, open. Okay, now why is this bad? We have a great location. We have some nice highlights falling on the, on the bushes and the trees. But when they were together, if we look closely, um, we've got the sunlight hitting the back of her hair. Because she's blonde, that's going to be a problem because we're never going to get the exposure right for her face, as in what, how we want the face to look to match the hair. And then they're standing um, slightly apart with him up a little bit and half of his face or even a third of his face is in sun and we don't get a great exposure. It just doesn't look that great. So what we have to understand, guys, is that it's, it's probably going to take you a little bit of experience to be able to photograph and make these locations that we're in actually work for you. My advice is if you were asked to photograph a couple, whether it's with an iPhone, whether it's with a DSLR, or you're just starting out uh, as a professional, my advice is warm up to a couple shots with a lighting and a location is a little bit more predictable. That'll be easier. As you master that, you can keep on going and then have some fun in sunlight, open shade, things like that. So what we're gonna do now, we're going to emulate shooting with window light by simply using the garage door that's open and I'm gonna basically be in the garage shooting against a nondescript background. And let's see, uh, let's see us get some really cool shots with a couple. Okay guys, come over here. Okay, so what is a, perhaps an easier way or a, a good place to start when you're in an environment like this? So I'm in my driveway right now. And we mentioned, if we look over there again, even from this perspective, you can sort of see how the sun is behind the house here. It's reflecting off the ground and it is causing quite a beautiful glow up against the garage door. Now, the problem is the lighting is coming from down low. Now, what we could do is actually get our couple to lean forward towards the light to correct that light so we don't have those very unflattering shadows on the upper cheekbones. Now, that being said, we can use the light a bit more effectively. The sun's coming from behind the house here. It's actually bouncing off that RV and then coming back this way. Therefore, because we've got a, a bit of a deeper shadow and the direction of light is coming from more eye level, I feel that we're actually going to get a, bit, a better quality of light. And it's, again, like what I call a lower common denominator in terms of making it a little bit easier for us. So although this is what we call open shade, as it's a, it's a shade of a building and it's open, we're not gonna be shooting in sunlight, we're gonna be shooting in shade. What I wanna do is have that beautiful direction of light, light bouncing off that RV coming back here. And now, once we've chosen that particular location, now we can actually photograph our couple, which we'll do. I'm gonna get you to lean on here, mate. That's it, and now just angle this way a little bit, perfect. And I want you to just basically go in front of him. You're gonna cuddle from behind. Just got a few little cobwebs there, perfect. All right, let's have a look. So give it a little cuddle from behind, your hands on his hands. Now, really important, whenever you are photographing a couple, do you sort of see how long her hair is? If I bring their faces together, the hair is interrupting the moment. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this. We, we, we could easily just flip the hair over and possibly even get it behind her ears, exactly. And I want you to sink your face right on her face just there. Beautiful, okay, good guys, fantastic. Turn your face into hers. So guys, whenever I photograph a couple, I like to think of their faces, their bodies, almost like two pieces of a puzzle fitting in together. So if you've never understood posing or read a start, simply ask yourself, what, is, what does a couple do? Well, they cuddle from behind like that, they cuddle from the front. 
they kiss, they, they do all these different things. So liken it to your own relationship and that gives you a great starting point. Now you can very clearly see, let's see if I can compose this and show you that the direction of light is really cool here. So let me go nice and close. So don't forget we're photographing it literally at a, in, in a garage door. Um, and I want to show you Okay, so now you'll start to see the shadows as I get a better exposure. Let me come a little bit closer here. Okay, I'm cropping into his hair, which I quite like. I'm cropping just underneath her chin, and I'm actually using the, the brown edges of the particular garage to frame them and to keep yourself contained. But it's nice and close, nice and intimate. Now, here's the cool thing. If you're looking closely at what I'm seeing right now, you're very clearly seeing that I'm shooting on the shadow side of her face, which is really, really cool. Gives it beautiful depth and dimension, nice intimacy and so on. So what we'll do, all right guys, just relax the eyes there a little bit. Close your eyes just for a second to give yourself a bit of a breather. Eyes at me, beautiful. Eyes at me, mate. Perfect, now, so you can do a safe shot looking in the camera, fantastic, but let's just add a bit more intimacy. So same thing again. Now, all I want you to do, mate, is just overlap her face a little bit and turn your face into hers. A bit more. Good. Chin up a little bit, like, like a turtle. Chin forward a bit more. And turn your face more left. More, more, more. Good. Top of your head away from me. So look at me. So like this. Head and turn your face that way. And then bring your face a little bit more forward. One second. Brandy, you're fine. That's it. And then close the gap. Good. Now, Jacob, turn your face this way. Good, don't move. Now, why did I make those micro adjustments? I don't want his nose coming right into, his, into her eye. That's gonna look a little bit weird. Um, and also, I always get my couples to mirror what I'm doing. So even though I try to describe what I wanted, so I turned like the top of your head away from me, he didn't quite understand it. So I looked at him and I said, I want you to do this. So he quickly understood it. So now, um, overlap her a little bit more, the same position, so more of a turtle there, mate. That's perfect. Do you see how the bridge of his nose frames her eyes perfectly. I love that. Now, I want to move a little bit this way because I had a little bit of her um, earring uh, on him, which I don't want. So look into her lips there, mate. And rainy eyes at me. Beautiful. Hold it. Gorgeous. Eyes all the way down now. Perfect. Hold it. Beautiful. And if you want to get rid of some distraction, you can sort of see some strands of hair there. Always watch that finesse, guys. Watch that little bit of finesse that might interrupt that moment. Okay, go again. Perfect. Yeah, that's looking better, beautiful. Hold it there for me, hold it. Let me go a little bit closer. Top of your head away from me, mate. There you go, see, now you, now you know. So once you get it right once, it's sort of like it's easy to understand for the rest of the time. All right, for the rest of humankind time. All right, good, hold it there for me, hold it. Eyes down again. Beautiful, very nice. So I love that. We've got a very beautiful shot in a very simple environment. This is just open shade of a building. Um, and again, remember, whenever you're looking at the sun hitting a building, look at the opposite way. Chances are there's gonna be a direction of light. What I want you to do is this. I always want you to look at your hand, okay? So if you look at my hand here, do you see the iridescence of my hand, the saturation, it's, there's a glow here. All right, so now what happens is, watch what happens when I turn this way. Now, it's hitting in full sun. It's quite flat. Watch what happens when I turn my hand. You see how you're seeing the creases in my hand and the texture? And now you're seeing more shadow. That means it's gonna be bad lighting unless I was to tilt the face upwards. And as I turn, it's only backlit. But do you see how it's looking a little bit flatter, but when I turn this way, then I get more of a glow. And guess what? That is where Rainy's face was actually turning into. Perfect. Okay, let's do a couple more shots of our beautiful couple here. All right, so how about we do something, um, let's switch sides. So Rainy, I want your back on the wall there. And then turn your body towards me. Perfect, bring all your hair on this side. And I want you to go around and face her properly. That's it, and I want you to bring your face sort of right over here next to her ear, as if basically you're whispering in her ear and she's doing the same with you. So Rainy, chin up for me, turn your face this way. Bury your head more in, mate. And if what I want you to do, mate, is I actually want you to part your feet so you can get a little bit shorter. Perfect. Okay. So, Rainy, chin up. 
you can close your eyes and bring your arm right underneath his armpit. That's it, right underneath, right underneath uh, up at the back. Keep my going, beautiful. And that left hand on the back of his head. Now, why are we doing this? Because we're suggesting intimacy. How do you hug your partner? Well, you would, be, you would hug like that often. You, you may whisper in the ear like that. You might kiss on the cheek like that. Remember, draw inspiration from what you do with your partner. And if you have no partner, um, look at the movies. Look at romantic movies. How do they hug? How do they kiss? Look at the notebook. Look at how they're kissing in the rain. Like there's endless ideas with what we have all around us. Do you like the notebook? The movie? Um, I've never watched it. <gasps> You've never seen the notebook? Yes, I have. Oh, that's just terrible. That is, um, I don't even know what to say. I can't even look at you right now. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to frame them. Um, now, I'm actually going to frame them in a bit of a slightly different way. And remember, guys, we're shooting in a garage door. Um, I quite like my frame being parallel there. Perfect. Now, chin up, Rainy. Turn your face a touch to the left. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. Those hands are really, uh, really beautiful. Now, do me a favor there for me, Jacob. I want you to slide your hand a little bit closer to me, as in so off, off her waist. So what I'm doing there, guys, is I want to expose the thinnest part of her waist. I actually want to see that little bit of a gap. Now, she's standing very flat-footed. What I want her to do, she's going to actually bend the knee that's closest to the camera. That's going to work. And then, and that adds a bit more of a hip and more of a curve, which is really beautiful, because I'm just basically seeing a suggestion of that towards the bottom. Perfect. And now, turn your face more left there for me, Rainy. That's it, good. Now, she looks like she's about to either kiss or whisper in, her, in, her, in his ear. Um, if I part her lips, it's gonna look like that's actually happening. So part the lips there, gorgeous, hold it. Beautiful. And then he might wanna say something really funny and then she starts giggling. Beautiful, very nice. Um, it's funny how as soon as you actually get them in a shot, don't waste the, don't waste the shot. I want you to take the, the, the shot that you were going for, as in being single laser focus on that first one, but then ask yourself, what could accompany this photograph? It could just be that you're actually getting a variety for some friends on your iPhone. It could be that you're working with a DSLR and you want to produce a, uh, an album or some wall art for them. That's okay. But remember, just take that extra shot. Have some fun with them. Don't waste the pose that you basically did. Okay, so now I'm going to get him to turn his face towards me. So same position exactly, so same position. Turn your face towards me, mate. So half your face is hidden. There we go, just like that. Perfect. Good, I love that, that's awesome. I love it because it's sort of almost, it's almost voyeuristic, right? So I want your eyes down there, mate. And then Rainy, your eyes at me. Perfect, hold it there. Good, let me just come back a little bit. Okay, oh, there we go again. I'm just basically composing so that I'm chopping into his the suit there. Okay, you're looking into her eyes at me there for me, Rainy. Turn your face a little bit to the left. And what I want to do now too, there's just a little bit of a strand that's coming here. You've got your Superman little curl going on there. Good, hold it there, good. Oh, we've moved slightly. I'll just fix that a little bit. Good, hold it there, hold it. Eyes into her lips, mate. Good, and then Rainy looking down. And again, I love the fact that the bridge of his nose is framing her eyes. Bit of a giggle there, guys. Nice and happy. Beautiful. Very nice. Fantastic. I love that. They look great. So it's amazing how we can quickly get some beautiful lighting, um, again, being reflected off a building, rather than always bringing out a speed light, like a, a, little, a little flash, um, or whether it's a big strobe or whatever it may be. But this is going to be one of your lowest hanging fruits here as well. Let's just try a couple of full length poses before we wrap up today's episode uh, and tutorial. Okay, so what we'll do, I'm going to get your backside right on the, on the wall there for me, mate. Okay, so what I want you to do is bring the backside on the wall, but then bring your feet further. And I don't want you to re lean back. What happens when he leans back, um, so Ronnie, if you just come, come on the side there for a second, a few steps this way so we can see. When he leans back, it just makes the gut look a bit bigger when we d it does this. Now, he's a young guy, he's a handsome guy, he hasn't had those problems, but we have to be careful of that. Now, if you're going to bend a leg, you want to bend the leg that's closest to the camera. So let's do that. And then Ronnie, come around this side. Okay. And come nice and close this way, Ronnie. In fact, part your feet, mate, so I'm going to get Ronnie sort of to, to step right in between. That's it. 
Um, in fact, Rainy, come put both feet in between. That's it, and part your feet, mate. That's it, come back. Now, this is a good way to actually even up the height difference as well in this particular position. And now close the gap for me. What I want you to do here is put your hand out of your pocket and just relax that down a little bit. Good. You can see how she's putting all her weight on her back leg. And then if we want to suggest a romantic sort of pose, and if his hand's in his pocket, then the hand is saying, I don't really love you, but, it, but he does, right? So we need to work something out. So now we're going to bring the faces close together. I, um, I want you to bring your hand on her face as if you're just about to guide a kiss, for example. Good. And now this hand, again, I want this hand on his wrist to almost say, I love where that hand is. Beautiful. Okay, hold it there. Now, stay there, Rennie. Turn your face into hers, mate. Stop. Too much. Come back. That's it. I'll adjust it accordingly. I'm going to shoot fuller length. Again, I'm only shooting on the, on the side of a house. I want to make sure that my frame is going to work in this scenario. So let me, I'm going to have to drop this down a little bit. Hold on. Okay, perfect. All right, so we've got some more lighting. What I want you to do there, Rainy, just bend that knee a little bit more. Perfect. Close the gap together. Okay, good. Chin, um, a bit of a turtle. There, there you go. When I say turtle, guys, I'm basically saying this. If we go back too much, too much with our chins, we get this. A turtle means whoop, we bring it out. And you can make the sound. It's more fun. All right, good. Hold it there. Hold it. Eyes into her, into her chin there, mate. Good. Hold it. Perfect. Give her a cute little kiss on the forehead. Good. Very nice. Nice and close. Now, forehead's touching again. Now, Rainy, a beautiful little look at me. Chin forward, mate, again. Good. Hold it there for me. Hold it. Stunning. Hold it. Beautiful. So now you can very clearly see there's a direction of light. Now I'm shooting her on what we call the broad side of the face, as in the side of the face where the light's coming from. And she's turning her face in this way, causing a shadow on this side. It really works for her. Um, but it was a nice way of doing a full length shot. But again, you sort of see how we're isolating the beauty within this location. So remember, guys, Always pick the best lighting rather than the best location. It's the lowest hanging fruit. Make, it, make your life easier until you get a bit more experience on how to shoot in sunlight and how to shoot with backlight and how to shoot with reflector and different things. The fact is that when you're photographing a couple, they're arguably in love. They're arguably, well, that's why they're a couple, right? They're together. So you want to give them a little bit of room to breathe and a room to play. So my advice is to go into open shade, at least to start off with until you get more experienced. Or it can actually even be into shooting actually uh, in window light in a home where there's a strong direction of light. It's a big light source like we have here. It becomes a nice and easy way to photograph. Now, I was photographing at a speed of 320, which is a, a very safe handheld speed, let alone the fact I'm on a tripod. F4 is going to give me a bit of depth of field. In other words, how many things are going to be in focus, which allows them to move a little bit. And I was shooting at 200 ISO. But remember, you have to start somewhere. My suggestion, start with a, a, some easier light until you get more experienced. Have some fun with your couple. And if you're losing inspiration for posing and what to do, simply ask them to do what you would do with your partner. Hug them. How do you kiss? How do you hold? All these different things. Enjoy. And remember, repetition, experience, and practice will be your best teacher. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Also, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, and don't forget to click on that bell for notifications of future episodes. Also, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you, answer any of your questions, and stay connected. And remember, you don't have to be the best, you just gotta be better than last week.